Hello my friends all over the world wherever you are. Today I'm making a juice with two dozen Anaheim peppers, a couple of large zucchinis and a number of other ingredients from my garden. Let's take a look at my ingredients. In addition to my zucchini and my Anaheim peppers I have a container of tomatoes, turmeric, about 150 grams, approximately 100 grams of ginger, one whole head of garlic, one medium sized beet, about four cucumbers, a large bunch of spinach, two green bell peppers, some um, beet tops, French sorrel, and carrots. So let's go ahead and make some juice and I'm going to start with my greens. Today I'm going to make juice using the front loading feed tube that eliminates almost 100% of the blowback and the near zero blowback cutter that has over 80 teeth cut into the blades. So the first thing I'm going to do is install the cutter and plug in my thermometer. And I'm going to feed in three ice cubes, three or four. It's a hot and humid day in sunny California today, so I'm going to cool down the cutter and the feed tube. I'm going to start juicing with my spinach. Now before I do the rest of my spinach, I want to point out that because the cutter is doing such a good job, you're going to be tempted to put in more greens than you should. Try to resist that temptation. Less greens is more effective. So let's continue. Now, greens tend to be more fibrous and well, the friction will make more heat. So I'm going to put in three more ice cubes to cool down the feed tube and the cutter. some garlic, the ginger, more ice cubes to cool down the cutter. some cucumber. Next I'm going to do the bell peppers but I'm going to quarter them because they're too big. And then I'll feed those in. I'm going to do my French sorrel and I notice my container is getting very full so I'm going to have to transfer some of this pulp into another bowl. Now, as 
as you can see my container is full so I'm going to mix this carrot with the greens and then transfer some of it into this other container so that I can finish the rest of my French sorrel and my carrots. Looks like it's going to overflow so what I'm going to do now is take a four cup container and start transferring some of this pulp into this other container. So I'm going to continue with the rest of my French sorrel and then follow that with the rest of my carrots. Start now with the carrots. Now my container is going to overflow again, so I'm going to have to transfer this into another container. Now here's the last of my carrots, and as I've mentioned before, the beauty of this front loading feed tube is that you can see if there's any produce not shred and usually there's a plug down here that you can't see so I'm going to put in a little more pulp and force that last plug through. Next I will clean the grid. The next step is to mix my carrot pulp with my greens. It's always a good idea to spin in both directions because you get a better mix that way. Now I'm going to demonstrate my six cloth less work method and I had to transfer my pulp into two different containers because I had a lot of produce today to juice. So let's start by putting three scoops of pulp into each cloth and we're going to fold it into thirds and set it aside because I'm going to press two cloths full of pulp at one time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these first two cloths full of pulp, put them in the juicer, and then continue folding. So these go in the center of the tray. Very important to center this left to right, center it front to back, adjust it if need be, all the way back and back it off a little bit. And I'm going to continue preparing the rest of these cloths. Now when I'm on my last cloth, I'll advance that all the way. This goes forward, that goes over. The spent cloths go on top. Now because I have this bowl of pulp uh, partially empty, I'm going to put the rest of this pulp that I have in these other containers in here and mix it again. and then continue with my juicing. And we'll mix this all up again. While I'm doing that I might as well put two more cloths in the press. Centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. And continue mixing this pulp. That, set it aside when you're on your last cloth, advance that all the way. Two scoops on top of the spent pulp. Later on we'll only put one scoop because the patty is getting thicker and thicker because we're not throwing it away. This goes forward, that goes over, the spent pulp goes on top. And we continue, and you have a rhythm going here. Centered left to right, centered front to back, adjust if need be, all the way back, back it off, and continue filling cloths with pulp. Now this goes forward, that goes over. The spent cloths go on top. Two more cloths full of pulp in the press. Centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back, back it off 
But because our bowl is so full, we're going to keep an eye on this while we're making more cloths full of pulp. I think we can get away with two more scoops now. I'm going to make a medium sized scoops. It's getting very full. So pull it into a tight package, flatten it, set it aside. And when you're on your last cloth, advance it all the way. Uh, because it's so full, I'm going to keep my eye on this, and I'm backing it off because it is too full and it's going to overflow. So I'll set that back, but not a little bit. I'm going to set it back a lot so it's very, very obvious. If you set it back only a little bit, you will forget and you will damage your juicer. You damage your juicer tray, that is. So before I put this into bottles, let me finish this last cloth with two more scoops. flatten that, set it aside, this goes forward, that goes over. I'm going to leave those in there because uh, they're not fully pressed yet and now we'll fill some bottles. <coughs> now I'm going to fill my bottles but I'm going to leave about 10 percent to top it off with uh, purified water or filtered water. I use distilled water because I have a water distiller. So I'm filling this from the back side so the camera gets a good look. And notice I'm leaving about 10% for water. And then we'll continue and make more juice. Now I'm down to my last cloths of pulp being pressed. And what I'm going to do with this spent pulp is I'm going to form it into a tight package and press it again to demonstrate how the whole health foundation model with this solid bottom plate can make 10% or more juice and with the most vital nutrients. So I'll fold it under several times like so in both directions. This is going to minimize any slippage. And we'll set that aside and continue folding these spent cloths, advance that all the way. Continue folding these spent cloths. Now as you can see I've repackaged all of the spent pulp into three double packets and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press it and use a measuring beaker to measure how much extra juice we get pressing the already spent pulp. I'll put these repackaged packets in the tray, centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back and I'm going to back it off a little bit. Now there we have 10 ounces of juice and it's changing the droplets so I'll put in my last set of cloths. In fact I think I'm going to repackage these again see if we get any more significant amount of juice out of that. So there's my last packet inside. Centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back. I'm going to back it off a little bit. Now the repackaged juice has yielded us 18 more ounces of juice so far from the already spent pulp that most people would throw away. Now we've got 19 ounces of juice now and my container is getting too full so what I'm going to do now is pour this into this other container and press the last two cloths full of pulp.